Please welcome CEO and founder of Love Scene, Jenna Lyon. Yes. Well, I, I already took up about five minutes before we went back on, Which on is air, funny. and I thank you because I was a stalker. I think when you were at J. Crew, you made it what it was, and then it can it, continue. Why stop? It, it uh, yes, it should. <laughs> well, you've been a staple in New York City fashion for decades. The New York Times called you the woman who dresses America, mm -hmm. and when you were president of J. Crew, the brand was a favorite of the Obama family, especially the first lady. Yeah. Now. Just amazing. Um, the real, you made sequins really cool. The, uh, the Real Housewives of New York City has now been rebooted to reflect the diversity of New York City. It actually feels real mm -hmm. this time. I, I saw the first three episodes. In age, race, religion, sexuality, you're the first openly gay New York housewife, which I'm no. shocked. Shocking. Shocked, shocked. Um, how important is it to you that representation, especially as we see that, that type of representation, especially as we see all this crazy anti-LGBTQ plus laws passed around our country? I mean, I think it's deeply important for a number of reasons. One of the things that I experienced when I was at J. Crew was I had a lot of young kids coming to me and their parents thought that they weren't going to be successful. They're like, my mom is so relieved to see someone successful who's openly gay. And for some reason, they thought that it was going to limit them or they wouldn't be happy. They couldn't find success in career or happiness and love and yeah. those things just aren't true and I think so having someone you can look up to and be like listen this person is surviving in the world they're doing fine I'm driving yeah. and you know that I think gives a lot of parents who are scared a little bit more confidence because it's the kids are they're out they're coming out there yeah. it's a whole new generation but it's the parents who are nervous and I understand yeah. like you want the best for your kids you want them to have everything and you don't want them to have any limitations and yeah. It can be seen as a limitation. For why, I don't know. The sex is amazing. So, so <laughs> I love it. In 2011, you were outed by the New York Post. Yes. As you were going through a divorce and discovering your sexuality, yes. we, we now know that you're, you now know that you're gay. So what was it like when that happened? Did it make you angry? Did you want to go tear up all the New York Post? <laughs> yeah, America? Yes. And yeah. <laughs> just for the record, I went and bought almost every single one in all of Manhattan in a cab, like, like running out. I, I did. It was so hard. I mean, I think... <laughs> You know, I hadn't really been in the public eye that much. It was all still new for me, and I didn't expect anyone to care about what I was doing in my personal life, and all of a sudden, everyone cared. Oh, everybody cares and about everybody. It was shocking to me. I was yeah. also not sure what the hell I was doing. It was all so new. I mean, I, was, yeah. I wasn't official in any way, but I remember hearing, you know, my name being called over the loudspeaker, and apparently the Post was calling our PR team, and they said, listen, can you get on the phone? We're going to run the story. Would you like to confirm or deny? It's so and, inappropriate. Yeah. Uh, and I it don't know why, it. I just, I didn't know, but I just wanted to say, I just said confirm, and I don't, it was like an out-of-body experience. Well, they had a photograph, right? No, they did, did not. not. No, oh. we weren't, we weren't, do I was literally at a restaurant, and someone said, they called the post and said, I looked like I was having an intimate dinner with somebody at a restaurant. Well, we I've not, had those, it's fine. I know, <laughs> they're, yeah. <laughs> and I think, wow. you know, I was too... I was so overwhelmed with everything that was happening in my life that I just said yes. What I was shocked at was just that someone took it upon themselves to call the yeah, post right. and share Nosy, that information. Busy bodies. Yeah. Crazy. It's so inappropriate. It but is. One thing I love about you is you're very open, and you've talked about how your late mother uh, struggled with Asperger's syndrome, yeah. and that growing up you felt like you didn't have a, um, really an example from her of how to make friends, uh, especially yeah. female friendships. Yeah. So now you're thrown into the world of Real Housewives. Ah. Has this helped you <laughs> no. form friendship? How are you doing? <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. I, I was... I mean, I thought I was going to do better. I thought I, you know, I had this idea, oh, I've, you know, I've been at the helm of a very large company. I've worked yes. with a lot of people. But what I realized is that I paid all of those people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really different, everyone listens to you and likes what you say when you pay them. Yes. <laughs> and this has been a really different experience for me. And I, I'm not good in groups. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm good on one-on-one, -on -one, and I will tell you anything, and I want to hear everything about you. But when it becomes a group situation, I sit in the corner, and, and then I look aloof, and, like, I think, and I'm just, like... And some of them are mean girls. Yes. Some of them... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, you're, you're not alone. I think we all project what we think we're like, and the reality is not always the same. But you've also been open with the fact you were born with a rare genetic disorder. We're just layering them on. Yeah, we thought. Um, okay, like, did, you tell it, did you tell the person on your first date that you had that? <laughs> That's you what's should funny. tell. You got to tell. Got to be honest. Gonna, yes, I've been watching the ladies. Yes. I'm just going to lay it all out there. Yes. But it inspired your latest business endeavor. Yes. Can you tell us about it? Sure. I have a genetic disorder called incontinent incontinentia pigmentae, which is really fun to say. It basically, what it means is I, all my teeth are fake. 
And oh, there's a lot of fake. They look I know. Good. I paid a lot of money for them. <laughs> um, my hair is pretty also fake. Like I could take it off. It's like a hat. Um, it's not a wig, but it's like a hat. And then I, my eyelashes are fake. I have no eyebrows, and I also have scars all over my skin. And so I was really conscious of. You know, it's one of the reasons I went into fashion because I wanted to look better. I was constantly trying to find ways to oh. fit in. Wow. And so when I was doing a lot of red carpet, I kept trying to find eyelashes that looked good and they were just huge on me. I couldn't yeah. wear them. Yeah. And so I remember talking to my makeup artist, um, Troy Olivieri, and we were, I was going on Oprah show actually. And Oprah oh. walked into the green room and she came in and I was, he looked at me and he looked at her. He's like, get back in that chair. <laughs> we're going to put some lashes on you and get some extensions. Because I, she, you know, she's got, like, there's a presence yeah, and yeah. I look like a wet rat. <laughs> and so I thought, well, my, if I couldn't find what I wanted, so I created a line of lashes that don't, oh, aren't as ooh, over the glamorous, top. Glamorous, like not the really yeah, long, so you can, oh, they're, they're more that's delicate. That's great. I know, here, I, this nice. is a funny thing, it's not an infomercial, but I'm just doing this because <laughs> But it's this it. one is gold. That one is, this is the special brass box that you can take. So when you're done with them, you want to take them on, on your, you travel. Oh, you've got to go somewhere. So I gotta those go are place. perfect length. They're beautiful. Thank you. That's nice. Thank you. Wow. So you can actually see out of it. I don't let them put lashes on because I can't see anything. Well, well I'll, it, I'll come over like and they don't put them no, in no, no, your these eye, are... Whoopi. Well, no, but they, the they, they, they go like, they're like this. No, 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 well, we can fix that. Okay. Got this. We can totally, okay. I, Some I'm you coming. think you're going to fly There's away. There's a whoopee zone back there. I saw. We'll put you in the whoopee zone, and then we'll put them on. They're okay, beautiful. I love it. And I'm going to, you know, Thank you. Okay. I brought my beautiful. granddaughter yes. to the J. Crew show. You did. And she lost her mind. Yeah. And now that's what she wears. Yes. Yeah. Oh. And I can afford it. It's so good. <laughs> so, you know, listen. You have a, a seat at this table anytime you want it. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate anytime that so you much. want to come. Thank you. We're and your eyelashes you. too. Yeah. And, you, <laughs> and your eyelashes too. Um, I had something I was supposed to read and now it's gone. Oh. Is that it? Yeah. Sure. Oh yes. That's the outro. Yes. Thanks to Jenna Lyons. The Real Housewives of New York City airs Sunday nights on Bravo and streams the next day on Peacock. So watch it. It's good. It's good. It's really good. <laughs>